if you guys hear, you know, some background noise going on, Ben's got, you know, the little ones running around. We're real people. You know, he doesn't have a daycare. He is his daycare. And if you hear, you know, little voices and you know, some like animals running around, it just happens. You know, we're working with what we got. And apparently with the snow on the ground, DCFS frowns upon, you know, shoving them outside at that age. So that's what you might hear. And uh, Ben's sitting there smiling and laughing because they are his little monsters running around. <laughs> I was approached probably right at towards the end of summer um, from Ben and Terry that uh, Terry was planning on maybe uh, revamping one of his old shows, you know, get some uh, crew together and just really get at it, you know, filming and uh, anything in the outdoors, really. And at the time, I'm as dedicated as it can be when it comes to the outdoors. And, uh, but I, I got a young family. I, I didn't have the funds to start it up, to get the equipment, um, but I was still interested. I told him definitely by next year, I, you know, I'd have it all together. So I, unfortunately I just started hunting. And when I could, I work uh, 12 hour shifts and I can only get out so much with my little guy and uh, can't pass up the opportunity. And it was October 12th. Long story short is I've got three years of history with this deer that was always goofy on one side with a really beautiful mainframe five with some splits on the G2. And he, uh, kind of blew up this year. He was only four. He was always goofy ever since he was one with that, he had like a club on the one side. That's how I always knew it was him. And going into the season, I told Ben, I'm gonna pass this deer. He's only four, I'm gonna pass him. Um, he's got some good genetics going. Well, I don't own any land again. I hunt very small partials and come the 12th, um, it just kind of all came together. Yeah, I heard, you know, seen some does coming down this little fawn button buck. And not five minutes after that, I heard some just gnarly grunting and roaring coming down this little draw. And there he was. And when I seen him and the amount of deer that I've had the opportunity to shoot with the little ground that I had to hunt, you know, I made the decision that, you know, I'm going to shoot this deer. And I was able to smoke him at 45 yards. He only made it 10 yards and he was piled up. And uh, he's probably one of my top five deer I've ever had opportunity to shoot in my life. We had, you know, good width, awesome character. This is the first year he finally started to come back on a normal side on his left side, but his brow time was always a little goofy, obviously still this year, but I'm just super stoked. You know, it just goes to show you got to use the opportunities that you have. Well, happy Halloween. Good evening, everybody. I don't know if you can tell, but it's uh, pretty windy out today. I'm about damn near blowing out of this tree stand. Terry and Ben were able to hook me up with some equipment, thankfully. And, uh, they gave me, I got a camera and an arm and I was able to get out there and start getting some footage and wasn't seeing a whole lot. October low kind of happened. My cameras were kind of dying off. I went out October, Halloween, it was October 31st with my recurve. I've taken a lot of does with my recurve over the year, but never a buck. And that morning I went out and I saw a good two year old pushing a doe and just run at her hard. And I'm for shooting anything four years old four years older, older, but I want to admit, I got my excitement level up with having this recurve in my hand. It takes that challenge up to the next level. I'm only shooting out to 15 yards possibly with this bow and he pushes this doe and they're coming right to me. And I had my mind made up that if this two year old gives me the opportunity with this recurve, I was going to be tickled pink to get my first buck with this recurve be this two year old. And unfortunately he ends up pushing her into this draw and he never came by. And that afternoon, the winds were supposed to pick up to, I think it was like 25 to 30 mile an hour. And I ended up uh, taking the compound out with me that night because of the wind. And ironically, that night, um, that same two year old ended up coming from the opposite direction, was still on this farm and came within, I'd say five yards of my stand and never knew I was there. He presented a million opportunities with a recurve and it's just kind of ironic. And I guess things work out for a reason. I'm obviously not gonna shoot a two-year-old with this compound. I got some awesome footage of him. Later that night, right at last second, I actually came to full draw, really beautiful wide eight, and I decided to pass him. And I'm really glad I did, because it turned out the footage wasn't that great. But it was just good learning experience for me to understand the lighting situations that on my screen, to me in my eye when I'm looking at it, it looked pretty good, but when you actually look at the video, it was really dark. All right, guys, well, it's November the 1st, the holy month is finally here. I'm um, gonna do the intro on the way in. We're on a little late, forgot about, uh, you know, time zone change and uh, got a little distracted doing some wrap up filming with the guys. It was November 1st, we were doing some filming at Ben's. 
And I had forgotten, actually we had kind of all forgotten besides Terry, that the time zone had changed that day. And I got nervous that I was late. I was late to the stand. Terry had just given me a new uh, arm to use, the actual finally first professional arm I had to use that day. I was over an hour late getting there as it was. I was, probably took me 40 minutes to figure this equipment out. I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea what I was doing. And not 15 minutes after I got set up that day, um, I looked down the field and here come this really mature, heavy nine point. At the time, I thought he was another deer that was on this farm, but I just seen his body. I knew he was mature and it's all I focused on at that point. He come down the field, so he's either gonna go up the ridge, this steep ridge, there's either a trail right in the middle, they go to the top or they stay at the bottom to me and they come to the pinch point. Unfortunately, he decided he's gonna go up this ridge and he, he cuts up in there. And he's coming down this, this uh, middle trail. I just hung this stand maybe three days prior. And I'll be honest, I, my range finder, I didn't have at the time. Um, you know, I kind of had to wing it and I played it by ear and I had guessed this trail to be 30 yards and I had got him stopped, got him in the camera and it was split second decision and I had shot and I missed right underneath him. I mean, luckily he didn't know what happened. You know, it's that time of year, noises kind of, they're all fired up, they're looking for a fight, they're seeing what's going on. This buck's a bully buck and I hit him with some grunts and thankfully he was curious enough, he come back down the ridge, he gets to the edge of the field and he starts coming right to me again the original path I wish he would have took. I'm filming by myself and there's a split second as he's coming down that I, when I, as I drew, I bumped the camera arm with my uh, elbow a little bit and, the, as, and just noticed, thankfully, he dips out of his uh, frame. So I was able to, as I was drawing, get the camera kind of back on him. I get him stopped. I'm not gonna lie. I don't do feel good about the shot. I didn't get a whole lot of penetration. Um, he didn't go down right away. He swirls, takes off. For a split second, I kind of doubted myself because as he swirls, the air works itself back out of him a little bit. And it didn't look like it got the penetration that I initially thought. I haven't missed in quite a long time. I'm a shot. path I was expecting to come down on. Um, he was courting too. He was already on uh, high alert from that first miss. Um, you know, th this is hunting. You know, you, I, I hunt very small ground. I don't get very many opportunities in my life. I think maybe fifth time in 15 years of hunting if I had to do that size in front of me. As I'm doing the wrap of this shot, I look up and the, coming down the same trail that he was originally on, here's this beautiful four-year-old 10-pointer that I've got also two years of history with that I originally thought that I had just shot. And he presents a 25, 30 yard shot again. Get some beautiful footage of him, he comes down. I can't even believe that right now. It hasn't been five minutes since I just stuck that deer. And that is the deer that I thought that I just stuck. That is the deer that I was in here hunting. Uh, so I'm thinking I might have just stuck my number one target. I was too busy focused on filming. I just knew he was a mature deer. I never had a night in my 15 plus years hunting like this. I've never had two deer within 10 minutes of that caliber come by. I can't believe this. I then slip out of there, let Ben and Terry know I just shot a good one. And me and Ben come back uh, probably four hours later just to give him plenty of time. And we take up the blood trail. And at first, it wasn't that good of a trail. You know, I'm gonna be honest. It, the angle was high. He, he 
kept a lot of blood in the pocket. Um, but there was signs that he was really hurting. And we knew it was a fatal shot. That's why, that's why it really sucked because where he hit him, you know, we went through that shoulder with no exit and there was just not great blood at all. All right, guys, well, here he is. Um, like I said, uh, he came out about a little after four o'clock. Um, got some pretty good footage of him. I actually thought he was another deer that I was after another 10 pointer um i'm kind of glad it was this deer the other 10 pointer even though he scores better um he's younger um I, it's good to you know give him a couple years or another year or two um this deer has got bases bigger around than you could ever believe it's pop can bases on him um real heavy in the beams to begin and you know when they start out not a real big score huge neck on him um i ended up missing him at 30 yards what i thought was 30 um shot low he trotted off only about 30 yards stood there forever it was a harder blood trail than we would have liked um, without an exit wound it all kind of stayed in he bedded once ultimately he really only went maybe 200 yards total um, not very far um, super happy with him um, my first self filmed first filmed deer ever actually so really pleased with that um, I'm tagged out here in Illinois for the year until the late, late CWD seasons with my brother Ben, help me out, and uh, gonna be, gonna be happier with him. I got velvet foot pictures of him all year, and uh, like I said, he was just an old, mature, stout bully of a buck, and he's good to take out the farm. Yeah, just monster bases, and we got Huge some good bases. photos of him, just tearing up trees, and this deer, again, was all over the camera. He was the bully buck of the farm. Um, <laughs> He was, the, he was the bully buck of the farm and it was good to take him off and uh, super proud of him. And again, not a high score, but to me, he's one of the better deer that I've ever had the opportunity to take in my life. And I'm very grateful for friends and to be able to share this opportunity with you. Tell your side of the story. Let me tell you, if you're going to buy lighted knocks, never get a color that you wouldn't expect to be a lighted knock. So, this guy over here sees the deal on Amazon and he gets these clear lighted knocks. Okay, so let's just start there. When we pulled into the farm, I looked over on this hillside and saw the lighted knock in the deer. So I didn't know it at the time. I thought that was- it's, This property is real close house. to the house. I the thought town. it was a nearby house. Um, so I didn't really put two and two together. If it would have been a blue, red, Green, Green, pink, pink. <laughs> Go down the list of all the colors. <laughs> we'd have we'd have found them in 15 minutes. Yeah.